Never done that with a pistol before. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk about the Daniel Defense, and this is an AR-10, which is the DD-5V3. And people have asked me what I think of this rifle. I know you've seen me uh, posting about it on Instagram. It's appeared in other videos, and I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on this rifle. So before we get started with today's video, though, guys, if you enjoy the content that we produce, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification bell. And if you'd be so kind, please comment down below because that helps us with the algorithms. And we try to answer any questions you guys may have, typically on the first day of release of the video. With that being said, let's get started with today's video talking about the Daniel Defense DD5 V3. I'd like to thank our friends over at Primary Arms for helping to make today's video possible. If you haven't checked out primaryarms.com, please do so. You'll find that they have a good inventory of all sorts of stuff from optics to firearms and everything in between. They usually have really, really good prices. They ship very quickly and they have outstanding customer service. And so we're really happy and proud to be working with primaryarms.com. So swing by and check them out. So the Daniel Defense AR-10 is probably my favorite rifle of its type. And let me explain to you why that is. First of all, the gun is very accurate and we'll show you guys some shooting and some groups that we shot today. Plus we'll show you some groups I've shot previously with the gun. But beyond that, beyond the accuracy of the rifle, the quality of the gun is just absolutely outstanding. And it should be for the price that they command of right around $24.99. It is not an inexpensive AR-10 type rifle. This one's chambered in 308, but you can get them also chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor and other calibers. But this one is the V3, which means it has the 16 inch barrel. The V5 would have the 18 inch barrel. So that's where you get the V versions uh, in the nomenclature on the rifles. So this is a 16 inch barreled gun. But let's talk about the features of the gun starting from the rear, working our way forward. We have a six position collapsible stock, and this is a standard mil spec tube. And the stock easily adjusts to whatever length that you would like. The length fully extended is plenty of room even for my large frame to get behind a scope. I usually run it a couple of clicks in and it gives me the proper eye relief when I put the ocular lens about uh, in line with the rear of the receiver which is what I typically do with AR type rifles. As if you come forward, well first of all you also have QD mounts right here on both sides of the polymer buttstock. You'll have a QD mount right here on the back of the receiver. The castle nut is staked. It's properly staked. I know a lot of folks pay close attention to things like that. We have an ambi charging handle. We also have just standard takedown pins. Nothing special there. We have ambi fire controls. The trigger in this gun, I believe at one point they put Geisley triggers in these out of the factory. They've stopped doing that. The trigger in this gun is a bit heavy. I'll give you a trigger pull weight here. I'll just throw that up on the screen. The pistol grip at first looks like it's almost too narrow. Now this is a rubberized grip. It has a very grippy texture to it. That's the same back here on the stock, but actually the grip feels really, really good. The palm swell down here, the relief for your finger that sits underneath the, you know, the trigger guard, it actually feels pretty darn good. Typically when I shoot a rifle like this for accuracy though, I don't put my thumb around it and I'll, I'll grip the, the rifle like this. The trigger, the only thing I can really say about it is it's a bit heavy. Uh, if you throw a Geisley trigger in it, it'll definitely have a much better feel and probably even improve your groups just a little bit. The gun moving forward has a polymer port cover, standard brass deflector here. We have ambi controls for both the bolt stop bolt release and the magazine. So you can reach up there and drop the bolt and you can also lock it open from the right hand side of the receiver. Of course, you have those same controls mirrored over here on the left-hand side of the receiver, and then your mag release is also mirrored on the other side of the receiver. The upper and lower receivers are made from a 70, 76, I'm, so, I'm sorry, 70, 75 T6 aluminum. So uh, they're both made from that same material. We have a 1913 rail that runs out to here, then it gets picked up by the M-lock handguard and continues its way out towards the end of the barrel. It uses standard SR25 magazines, but uh, it'll come with a PMAG, and generally that's why I run in them, just a PMAG, but again, it'll work with any SR25 type magazine. As I've already mentioned, this is M-lock rail system out here, so you have M-lock all the way around, so you can put any of the accessories that you would like 
What's kind of uh, different is these are not M-lock slots here, but you do have M-lock here and here. And then on the bottom, these just look like vent cooling holes. Now the gun has its barrel held in place by four bolts. And, um, you know, we we talk about this in the disassembly a little bit. These four bolts give a larger surface area to the barrel as it mates to the receiver. And Daniel Defense claims that that improves rigidity, stability, and accuracy. The barrel is um, cold hammer forged. It has a proprietary steel. They don't say what the steel is, but it is cold hammer forged. And it's also chrome lined, which I find to be pretty impressive. You know, FN has produced some very accurate rifles like the SCAR-20 that has a chrome lined barrel. Uh, this rifle, no different. Uh, they've done amazing things with the barrel because typically chrome lining, um, you know, makes the accuracy a little bit less. In this case, uh, much like the FN, it does not. It doesn't seem to negatively affect accuracy whatsoever. On the end of the barrel, we have 5 8 by 24 thread. And of course, I have my, uh-oh, a little bit of carbon. I have my signature <laughs> OSS can on it. But you also have a intermediate length gas system on here that is direct gas impingement and then you have a two position gas regulator for suppressed and unsuppressed shooting. With the OSS, I run it in just the standard mode. Uh, I don't put it in the suppressed mode because there's not enough back pressure then to operate the gun. The OSS is a low back pressure can. Let's take a look at the rifle disassembled. I'm not gonna go through the entire breakdown procedure of an AR-15 or AR-10. There's plenty of videos out there showing you how to field strip the rifle. I just wanted to focus on some of the things that I found particularly interesting about the design of the DD rifle, the V3. All right, so the bolt carrier and bolt, let's take a look at this first. Fairly conventional looking from the outside. On the face of the bolt, you will notice that we have two ejectors versus one. And then in the rear of the bolt, you'll notice that there is a clip holding a, it's kind of a weighted buffer system in here. And it's supposed to reduce, you kind of hear it moving. It's supposed to help reduce the recoil impulse of the 308 round when it's fired. The T-handle, just a pretty standard T-handle, it will unlock from either side simply by pulling on the arm. All right, so let's take the bolt and carrier apart really quick. There are some differences here. So first of all, you have a captive firing pin, retaining pin. That's nice touch. I would like to see this done to all AR-15s, M16s, and AR-10s because it keeps you from losing that cotter pin. Also, when those cotter pins get old and used, they kind of get deformed and they become impossible sometimes to even get back into place. Sometimes just difficult, sometimes just impossible and you have to replace the cotter pin. All right, so once you have that pulled out, now you can take the firing pin out. You'll notice there's a longer cut here on the top of the carrier and a shorter one on the bottom. It's a full auto carrier, but because we don't have the hole going all the way through because the buffering system back here, the firing pin has to come out this way through that longer cut. Now let's see, all right, it didn't fall out. There is a little spring in there. I'm gonna get out for you. There it is. So here's your firing pin and this little flat spring. So the flat spring would help you prevent presumably slam fires. On the cam pin, unlike an AR-15, you don't have to rotate the cam pin to disassemble it. It has flats on either side and then it's rounded on the other two sides. Just push that back and pull up on it. You don't have to rotate it and take the cam pin out. So that's slightly different than your standard AR-15. Pull the bolt out and that looks like a fairly conventional bolt, but you will notice there's a long slot here and a regular pin over here. So to take the extractor out, I'm just gonna use the tip of the firing pin, push on this, it'll pop out, but you'll notice that the, uh, the retaining pin is slightly different than what you've seen on other rifles. There's your extractor. They say that has improved geometry to aid in extraction. And I'll have to get a picture of this. There's two little holes down here and you can see the springs from the ejectors through the two little holes. 
and I'm guessing that those are relief holes in case maybe water gets in there or something. This gives the water a way out. I don't know, but you can definitely see the little recoil springs through, or not the recoil springs, the uh, plunger springs through those two little holes. All right, so that takes care of the bolt and the carrier group. Pretty much touched upon everything that's unique about that. On the lower, we do have full AMB controls, so we have a mag release on both sides. What's interesting is the mag release button looks the same on the left-hand side of the receiver as it does on the right-hand side. You don't see too many rifles like that. That It looks the same. And then we have our bolt stop bolt release that's present on both sides and you can see how they work in unison. There are a couple of screws here that are we believe holding the magazine release, dual magazine release system together. So you have those two screws on top that you're not going to see on other rifles. Other than that, it's a pretty much standard AR-15 fire control. has an M16 hammer in it. On the top of the receiver, the, the upper receiver, we have a Ford Assist, but we have these four bolts holding the barrel together. So these four bolts hold the barrel in the gun and also hold the handguard on the gun. Uh, Daniel's Defense says that this is done to increase rigidity and improve accuracy. That pretty much is what makes this gun stand out from some of the rest. I also should point out that you have this DLC finish on the bolt carrier, which gives it that bright, shiny look. It's not blued, it's a DLC finish, which is, is smooth, and I've cleaned this up for you guys, and I cleaned the whole gun with just a rag. You don't even really need to use a solvent because this DLC finish the carbon just wipes right off of it with a rag, which is a really nice touch as well. When it comes to 308 AR-10s, they're not all equal. So yes, this is an expensive rifle, but there are things about it that will appeal to some shooters. Now, not all 308 AR-10s are created equal, as I said, because some will have abrupt recoil impulse. It's, it's uh, to the point where take the Brownells uh, BR-10, it's no longer in production, but that super lightweight little rifle that thing would kick you pretty good. It jumped around. Now, it's not painful, but the gun definitely has a more abrupt, less pleasant recoil impulse than the DD5 V3. Uh, I've shot PSA 308 AR-10, same thing. Um, being overgassed a little bit, the guns just kick more. They jump more. They're not as pleasant to shoot as this rifle. So how did they make this rifle so pleasant to shoot, given that it's only eight, about, about eight and a half pounds? Well, we talk about it at the disassembly, but the biggest difference is we have a uh, buffering system built into the bolt carrier itself. So it's working in conjunction with the existing buffer system and recoil spring that all AR-15 AR-10s have here in the receiver extension. So that, I really do believe, helps make a difference in this rifle because it's a very comfortable rifle to shoot. So just in general, the ergonomics and that you know recoil dampening system, I believe, is also helping to make this gun just a really nice rifle to shoot. That and the thing is really accurate for a gas gun. And we'll talk about that when we get into the accuracy. On top of the rifle, I do have an Athlon scope. We do sell these over at Copper Custom. Uh, this is the Ares ETR. This has a four and a half to 30 power magnification, has a really fine reticle in there uh, that, that allows you to get really precise with your holds, has a little tiny dot in the center, then you have a mill reticle. Uh, I really like this for target shooting because it, again, helps me get that really precise shot uh, on top of that, or what's holding it all together here, is an American Rifle Company scope mount. All right, with all that being said, I have some 150 grain ball ammunition from American, uh, or from Federal, it's American Eagle, and we'd like to thank our friends over at Federal for supplying the ammunition to the channel. They do that so uh, at free of charge, which definitely helps us out quite a bit. All right, have 10 rounds loaded into a PMAG, and I'm just gonna go ahead and engage my, my challenge target. Uh, downrange. If you guys are interested in picking up a steel target, highly recommend it. We do have a discount code down in the video description below. Uh, swing by Challenge Target and, and pick up a steel target. I think you'll really like shooting steel versus paper. All right, so let's check out this recoil impulse as I engage this uh, man-sized target at 100. I don't like a whole lot of magnification. Today, it's really hot, high humidity, and windy, 
and these aren't necessarily the best groups I've seen out of the gun, but this is what we're going to show you because this is what we shot today, but I'll show you some other groups that we've shot with the, the rifle as well. Up here was our confirmation of zero target. I always do that because um, I'll have my dope set for longer range, and I won't reset my turrets to zero before I go home, and of course that's exactly what I did. So first shot up here, dialed it back to zero, and then the next two shots went where they were supposed to. So here we have a Federal 168 grain ammunition. This is gold medal match, and it's just under an inch, 0.9 of an inch. Over here, 168 grain, once again, 0.7 of an inch. Then we switched over to the 175 grain ammunition, and this is something that I haven't already mentioned, and this is important. This rifle has a 1 and an 11 twist barrel in it. And I've confirmed that by looking at the stamping on the side of the barrel. Now, if you get on the Daniel Defense website right now, they're going to tell you that these rifles have a 1 in 10 twist. So which one are they shipping? I don't know. I don't know if the 1 in 11 is old and the 1 in 10 is new or vice versa. But this one has a 1 in 11 twist, which means it should do pretty good with 168s and 175s. And that seems to be the case. So with the 175 grain federal gold medal match, we saw 0.7 of an inch. And then down here... The last group I fired was with the 175 grain federal gold medal match, and it gave us 0.4 of an inch. So the gun is sub-minute accurate, and it's consistently that way. If it ever shoots over an inch, I'm doing something wrong. It's definitely the loose nut behind the butt plate causing it, that or there's an ammunition problem. And ammunition can be uh, vary in quality from batch to batch. So uh, sometimes you'll see things like this. This is a group that's a half MOA, 0.5 of an inch, that was fired previously out here, and that was using Federal 168 grain ammunition. And here's another group that I fired up here, again with the DD5 V3, and this is 0.3 of an inch with Federal 168 grain ammunition. And when I say that the guns are getting close to bolt action accuracy, this is my Delta 5 Pro and 6.5 Creedmoor. So... You can see how it shot. Again, the Delta 5 Pro with 140 grain, bolt action, 6.5 Creedmoor. So you can see that the gun's starting to get into um, bolt action territory in terms of accuracy. And this one I just wanted to show you, which is kind of funny, because when I shot it, I simply couldn't believe it. This is from the Daniel Defense. This is using Federal. I didn't mark what weight bullet, but I'm guessing it's 168 grains, and there's literally three shots to the same hole. Now I could go and say that my gun is a one-hole gun, and claim that all over the internet because I did it once, but it's never done it again. This gun typically hovers right around anywhere between a half inch and just shy of an inch. So it's truly a one MOA gun, but technically I would say it's just under one MOA capable if you were to shoot a five shot group or a 10 shot group, which is really, really good. And sometimes if you're doing your part, the gun can shoot even better. So the accuracy on this thing is outstanding. And it should be, again, because of the price that it commands at $24.99. Uh, that's nothing to sneeze at. That's a lot of money. But you're getting probably one of the best built AR-10s on the market for that price. The DD5 V3, in my opinion, is probably the best AR-10 on the market. Now, I know that's going to cause some controversy down in the comments. There's a lot of things, a lot of variables that play into that. But I think... You know, setting the price aside, the features, the recoil impulse, the just shootability of the gun, the accuracy of the gun, it just has that complete package feel. And then you throw in that price, which is salty. It's not an inexpensive rifle, but it's different than most other AR-10s on the market. And for example, and how the barrel attaches to the receiver, the fact that it has a chrome-lined barrel and can shoot sub-minute groups consistently, things like that really tend to impress me. Now, there are other options out there. I have the SIG 716i, and I've shot really good groups with that rifle, and it's performed flawlessly. I've had a great time with that rifle, and it's a fraction of the price of the DD5 V3. So there are other options out there. But if cost is no concern, I really don't think you can do much better than this particular rifle. Now, as I've mentioned, the, this is the V3, which means it has the 16-inch barrel. There's the V4 with the 18-inch barrel. There's the V5 with the 20-inch barrel. Plus, you can get it in different calibers like 260 Remington, 6.5 Creedmoor, and, of course, 308. So you have some options out there. Uh, and also, there's different color options and things like that. So there's, you know, you can pick the rifle you want and order it, although everything shows out of stock on their website right now. But I think that's starting to calm down. The entire market seems to be settling down now, and more guns are becoming available because the uh, the panic buying seems to be subsiding. Let's hope that that continues. So 
In a nutshell, I really like the rifle. And again, I would say this is probably of the AR-10s that I own, the best AR-10 that I own. Absolutely love the thing. I look forward to reading those comments down below. Let me know what your favorite AR-10 is. Do you have a Daniels Defense? Has yours been good? Have you had problems? Or what's your favorite AR-10? Just let us know. I love to read those comments. And also guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, we have been demonetized by uh, YouTube as many other channels have. But if you'd like to support us so we can continue to bring you content like this, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. You'll get direct access to me. I answer all private communications. And um, yeah, we've built a really cool community over there. Plus, you get early access to videos like this one before it goes live to the rest of the world. Also, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. And thank you guys for 13 years of support. It's been greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that big 14 coming up here soon can't wait for winter. This has been one hot, muggy summer here in Northwest Indiana. All right, guys, talk to you soon.